So let's talk about shooting a wedding with a GoPro camera. Hey, what's up guys, Meredith here, and we're gonna be talking about something that I have never done before until just a couple weeks ago. This question actually comes up quite a bit in my GoPro enthusiast Facebook group, people wondering, I'm going to a wedding, I'm gonna be taking my GoPro with me, do you have any tips for settings or ideas and things like that? A couple years ago, a family member asked me if I could GoPro a family wedding, and I was like, uh, I have no idea idea how I would even like do that. This is something that in my mind I always think the couple should pro probably just hire a videographer for this. But a couple weeks ago my brother got married, I was a guest at the wedding, and I have an abundance of GoPros and accessories so I thought why not? Why not give it a try? Like what what's the harm in trying? So I have a whole boatload of tips tricks, ideas, suggestions, and all, all that kind of stuff for you if you're gonna be using a GoPro to capture a wedding. So the gear that I took with me, I had a Hero 5 Black, I had a Hero 2018, I brought my Karma Grip along for the ride, and I brought the shorty uh, little handle thing. That's really all I had with me because I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to like carry my seeker backpack into a wedding. So <laughs> all I had was my purse and I just wanted to make sure I could fit everything in my purse. Of course, I you can't fit the Karma case and stuff like in your purse, but I could hand carry that. I was, I was okay with that. Hey, before I get started, if this video is helpful for you, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the VidProMom channel because this is where I bring you tutorials, tips, tricks, how to's on video editing, how to use a GoPro camera and stuff like that. So um, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I think we should be friends. So tip number one, and this is this really should be more like a rule, which is why I made it number one, but stay behind the hired photographer or photographers. Um, they're getting paid to be there. They need to get those shots. Um, so stay behind them. Don't, don't make them like edit you or crap you out of their pictures. Um, that seems like a no brainer to me, but there's a, also a really good reason for you why you'd wanna stay behind the photographer, and that is let them figure out what angles right? So if you're just kind of following them around, you're staying behind their camera, but you're also taking advantage of their expertise, their eye, their experience, um, what they're seeing with like the lighting situation, right? So um, just if you stay behind them and just kind of copy what they do, then you'll always be behind them and you'll always be getting literally the same shots that the professional photographer is wanting to get. Number two, I wanna talk about settings a little bit. Um, the wedding that I went to, I really didn't even think about my settings. They were just, it was on full auto, um, like auto everything, pro tune off on my GoPro. So I think the Hero 5 was probably on linear field of view and the uh, Hero 18 doesn't have linear, so it was on medium. Um, I just kept everything, I just, I wanted it to be super, super simple. I, you, you know me, I just, it's like, get what you can get, right? Um, so there are a couple of unique things with a wedding to take in, in consideration. Like for one thing, the wedding that I was at was indoors, but it was also inside of a very small, very dark chapel. And it was a, it was a really unique um, chapel like in its own, but like the GoPro, not gonna pick up all that uniqueness because it's just, the GoPros are just not really um, designed or well suited to shoot indoors. So that's something to consider. If you really want to get indoor footage, um, you might wanna just maybe use your phone. <laughs> your iPhone is actually really good at um, shooting in just auto and just automatically adjusting its own exposure and stuff like that. And it actually works really well indoors. Like my footage is a little bit grainy in places and it's just, it's not, um, it's not, it's not ideal. Let's just say that. Tip number three, charge your gimbal. In fact, if you don't have a gimbal, don't worry about this step, but if you do have a gimbal, use the gimbal and make sure it's charged ahead of time. I brought my Karma Grip along with me and I was using it ahead of time. I was using it like, you know, 
while guests were arriving and stuff like that. And then it died literally as the bride was just taking her first steps down the aisle. It died. It just, it shut off. It saved everything, shut off and died. And so I really quickly had to take it out of the harness and, um, and turn it on so that I could capture something. I have no idea how long the um, Karma Grip is supposed to last. I charged it when I got it and then we went to Gettysburg for a weekend and I used it you know, not not a ton, but quite a bit. And then I just didn't even think about it. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. By the way, I've had the Karma Grip for a couple of months now. I love it. I actually bought it secondhand. I don't know why I waited so long, honestly. I, you guys were telling me, you should get one. And I was like, eh. I'm so glad that I did. Um, and by the way, thanks Nathan for selling me your Karma Grip. Um, I really, really like it a lot. So a couple of the reasons why I really like the Karma Grip um, is that it charges the GoPro because it plugs, the GoPro itself plugs into the grip. So it charges, there's a battery in here, it charges the camera while you're using it, um, which is brilliant because battery life on the GoPro, not that great. I also really like that it has a wrist strap. The, um, the Evo Shift Gimbal that I tried out, I talked about back in my Gettysburg video, um, that doesn't have a wrist strap. It just feels safer as far as just maybe accidentally dropping it or, you know, if it's hot outside and your hand gets sweaty, I just, with the Shift, the Evo Shift, I just felt like, I felt like I could probably drop it if I wasn't being like super careful. I also love that the case has a wrist strap. Watch this. The case has a wrist strap as well. Could we design this to be like a little more elegant of like a purse situation? I've always wanted to like invent a GoPro accessory and I feel like a, a classy looking gimbal case purse clutch thing that might be the thing. That, that might be the thing. Another thing I really like about the Karma Grip is that I can keep the camera inside of the harness and then put it in the case. With the Evo um, Shift Gimbal, I couldn't do that. It didn't, it just like, it didn't fit. It's there, it's ready to go. You just have to turn it on and press, you know, record. Um, which, speaking of which, I love that all of the, um, you can press record, you can change modes, you can tag things. It's all right here and it's all super simple. Um, there are some other features of, of other gimbals that like give you more options for panning and different modes and stuff. This one really only kind of has one mode, although you can, you can pan, you can make it sort of pan. And if you want to switch over to selfie mode, you just turn it around. Just Turn it around so that it's facing you. It's pretty easy. So a couple other tips for shooting. Um, don't forget, w w if you have a GoPro, don't forget like you have unlimited options when it comes to angles. Um, so, you know, bring a couple extra mounts, bring a couple extra cameras. With a GoPro, you could mount it in some places, some inconspicuous places so that you as the guest can set it up and then go sit down and just let them roll. I wish I had taken more GoPros. <laughs> I wish I had taken more GoPros and actually set them up and really got like some more interesting angles. Um, just by hiding the camera in different places so that they're not in the way, they're not like obnoxious and in the way. Just be creative with it, get some get some different angles and some different shots. Um, just like I said, stay out of the way of the photographer. And lastly, this is a tip for anything ever, it doesn't have to be a wedding and it does not even have anything to do with having a GoPro, but don't forget to capture the people that are around you. Especially at a wedding, the bride and groom have their closest family and friends there to celebrate with them. If you're creating a video that's like a highlight reel of their wedding, um, the wedding itself might be about the bride and groom, but they're going to want to see their guests having a good time celebrating. So I'm curious if you have shot any sort of like a wedding type situation on your GoPro um, or multiple GoPro cameras. Let me know in the comments um, because I would love to add more tips, eventually maybe do another video or add them to the blog post that goes along with this video over on vidpromom.com. So let me know in the comments and if this was helpful for you, 
give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you can hear more about my epic summer of awesome adventures and get future tips and tricks for GoPro videos and video editing and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.